What's up? It's Kendall here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up, home skillet biscuit? Do you need to drive right now, sir? Like right now? This is the time that you're gonna use your motor vehicle? All right, and it's Saturday, happy Saturday. If you're new around here, Saturday is when I do something called Bad Movies in a Beat, the series on my channel where I talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on. Last week, we talked about an absolute gem of the internet by the name of Killer Bean Forever. Hilarious. I even had family members saying that they wanted to watch it now, so that was a fun time. It's a movie about a uh, coffee bean that is also an assassin that is trying to go rogue from a coffee bean assassin organization. Yeah, yeah, that's the movie. If you haven't seen that video and would like to check it out, you can check it out up above, or of course, you can check it out in the Bat Movies in a Beat playlist. This week's movie was not planned. It kind of came out of the blue um, because I wanted to watch it because it sounded terrible, but I didn't plan on making a bad movie and a beat on it. I've said this before. I have a love for like those Fatal Attraction stalker movies. I, I have, a, it's a, it's a, it's a guilty pleasure, all right? I've done several movies like that on this, in this series. There was Secret Obsession, Psycho Stripper, My Teacher, My Obsession, which apparently has an alternative name, Dad Crush, which I'm gonna need somebody in the gay dating app sphere to make, <laughs> to make an app called that. I guess Ma, to some extent, was also one of those type movies. Yeah, I've done several. I like them. All right, they're bad, but it's like that there's something very comforting in how formulaic they are. You know what you're gonna get. An attractive and otherwise well-established person who's going to become entangled with someone based off of very little interaction generally. Generally the movie results in just being a bunch of cascading events that are supposed to be indicative of them being a psycho. If there's an animal introduced, that animal will die, which is really messed up. By the end of it, there's a showdown in which the crazy person gets hit with something that in real life would kill them, a glass bottle, a vase. They get stabbed, they get shot something that should have killed them but it doesn't because we have to have that like jump scare where they come back and then there's one more time when they get hit and it finally does it you know and at the end everything is good because the psycho died and now we can go about our lives how do you go back to your life after <laughs> after such an amazingly awful event okay so you're probably like kind of why are we doing the roommate 2011 film that follows all of these general tropes. And to be honest with you, the reason was I was watching this movie anyway and I didn't have another movie for this week. <laughs> like I knew this was gonna be bad. I knew it was gonna be bad in a very particular way and I was not wrong. Oh my God, it's like I'm psychic. So we're talking about the roommate. <laughs> so the movie begins, cause that's how movies work. And we meet a girl named Sarah. Let me just say this off the bat. Sarah's face annoyed me and I couldn't figure out why it annoyed me. I think it annoyed me because I, I'd, seen, I'd seen her face before and I could not put my finger on where it was. I was doing the whole like, where the, that's uh, what shit? And then when I was writing up notes and looking up little things about the movie prior to making this video, I realized she's North from Detroit Become Human. That's the second Detroit Become Human reference I've made in this series, okay? What other game do you know that is so culturally relevant? And I hated her in that game. I thought she was the most annoying person in the world. Uh, so sorry uh, if I still think you are because she was annoying as hell through this movie as well. But uh, she plays Sarah in this movie. She's here as a fashion design student going to UCLA, which apparently let me know if you go to UCLA. Is one of the most modern and well-designed campuses I've ever seen because what is that? Every college dorm room I've ever seen has that ugly vomit yellow pine furniture and that piss stained eggshell white walls. And I don't know, I just had some envy that made me mad because like you go in and it's all this luxury, I spend hella money on my degree and I couldn't get some luxury. Anyway. Sarah moves in. She meets Allie or AJ. I don't remember which one she is, but I know she's one of them. By the way, on this topic, this movie has probably the most concentrated cluster of 
vaguely recognizable 2010 actresses and actor, well, one actor that I vaguely remembered, Allie or AJ, the main annoying chick from Vampire Diaries, also the witch girl from Va Vampire Diaries, James from Twilight. <laughs> and then of course, Blair from Gossip Girl, and also that girl that sings in that one song that you vaguely remember. Then the good girls go back and then go bed, bed. That song was terrible. <laughs> Leighton Meester, Leighton Meester. And she in this movie is uh, the psycho roommate, Rebecca. We don't know that yet though, it's too early in the movie. I mean, we know it because we saw the trailer. We know, but we don't know it yet, whatever. There is a definite divide between Sarah and Rebecca from the beginning. Sarah's normal. She has a social life. She goes to parties occasionally. She has a 35 year old freshman drum playing boyfriend. <laughs> Brooding at 25 year old teenager. Felt like jazzing it up for you, my bad. The boyfriend, by the way, is awful. This is kind of like a side note. Um, Like they meet at a party and his way that he got to talk to her was spilling a drink on her purposefully and then telling her, yeah, I did that to talk to you. And she's like, ah, and they kiss. Dumb bitch. When a girl has had three cups, we don't get her up into our room. We have to pull kitchen duty for like a week. Whereas Rebecca is this seemingly nice, soft-spoken, proper girl. She's a mild-mannered art student from a affluent family with a gentle disposition and a mild temperament. So crazy, of course. Like I said, Sarah's a design student and holy sh <laughs> Oh boy. Oh, that's an ugly outfit. That's a 2010, <laughs> that's a 2010 outfit. Ooh, a fedora and a scarf. Is that a vest? Bitch, ew. <laughs> 2010, that was a look, honey. That hat is so ugly. And she wears it for so long. She wears it to class, to a club. Ew, can you imagine how nasty her hair is under that? Gross. But anyway, yeah, while she's out, Allie or AJ <laughs> leaves her in a club and Rebecca comes out and they meet up. And this is the first time we just get a, a small glimpse of Rebecca's obsessive tendencies. Tomorrow you're all mine. I wanna show you the big city the right way. And I promise I won't abandon you. So there's two things that happen really quickly. One, Sarah finds a cat. She wants to keep the cat. Yes. That's what's gonna, yes. Also, Rebecca wears Sarah's dead sister's necklace. Sarah has a dead sister who had a necklace that Rebecca wears. It's my sister's. You can buy anything of mine except for this. Speaking of jewelry, uh, another just random crazy chick thing that she does is uh, when Sarah gives her earrings to try on, instead of letting her know, hey, I actually uh, don't have pierced ears, she just forces the earring through her ear. Inadvertently hilarious, cause I laughed. I laughed here. I was just like, ugh, what in the tetanus shot? <laughs> it's just like gross. Rebecca, being the obsessive person that she is, is very not okay with um, Sarah hanging out with Ali or AJ. There's a scene where she's just like sitting outside of her door and they just have a stare down. I don't know what made me like, I, I, I think because when I was watching it, my first thought was like, you selling cookies? But after that exchange with Allie or AJ, she goes up to Sarah and she's like, hey, your roommate's crazy. She just, she was just outside of my room being a, being a, spook, a spooky spookerson. And Rebecca over there just looking at her like she stank. Actually, that's her face the entire movie. That's when you know she mad, she just like, but Allie or AJ isn't gonna be an issue for much longer because there's a scene where Allie or AJ is taking a shower. It's a long drawn out scene that basically results in Rebecca coming in, pushing her down, saying, stay away from her, you're a bad influence. And then she rips her belly button ring off. And I was like, why didn't no one hear this? This is a college dorm. <laughs> She didn't go to student services or the authorities. And, and outside of like a little awkward exchange with Sarah, you don't really see her for the rest of the movie. So I guess she was just like, hey, 
I have a torn belly button, bro. Like, we not that close anyway. <laughs> like, you can have her crazy ass, it's fine. So Sarah and her boyfriend, yeah, the loser that spilled beer on her on purpose in the beginning of the movie, they're dating. Yikes. They start to wonder what's up with Rebecca because she seems to be just really overly concerned about coming back at home at a reasonable hour, quote unquote. She's like unnecessarily worried and calling all the time. I don't have a curfew. Po, you are not my mama. The thing about Sarah is that she's an idiot. So um, she's just like, oh, she's maybe I should have told her. But throughout the whole movie, basically, Sarah is like, oh man, she's, She's just, I don't know, she's just kind of protective. There's nothing wrong with that, she's cool. Not dumb, naive. That's what you get for trying to see the best in people. See, the absolute worst, like I've always done. <laughs> but while they're over here ignoring her crazy, she's doing more crazy stuff. Cause crazy hoes be crazy and I don't know. Sarah has an ex. That's briefly mentioned in the movie. And he calls her regularly trying to get back together or at least trying to get back in contact. One time he calls and Rebecca answers the phone and she impersonates Sarah and um, initiates like phone, um, cause that's what masturbation looks like. <laughs> phone sex. At the end of which she's like, don't ever call me again. But my question the whole time was like, what? Why don't you know what your ex's voice sounds like? Y'all didn't break up that long ago. Now, Sarah has a friend who's like a very successful fashion designer already. Very popular, very rich and well-established designer who lives in this beautiful apartment that she's never in because she is rich and established. She offers Sarah the place to stay while she travels because Sarah got caught with the cat. But she's like, hey, you can keep the cat here. You can live here, it's fine. I'm never here because I'm a rich and established woman who is rich and established. Might do that, might move out. Uh, <laughs> and she runs it by her roommate, cause that's a great idea. She has a minor breakdown, but she doesn't wanna let all her crazy out. And so to keep her, sorry, uh, she puts the cat in a washing machine. And then she's like, I don't know what happened to the cat. It just disappeared. Isn't that crazy how it goes sometimes? Sarah has a professor for her design class and he's obviously gonna be uh, a sexual assaulty piece of shit because he's a male professor in a movie. They're always disgusting. I, um, that sucks, man. Like, <laughs> Why can't male professors get a better rep, dude? Like literally, if there's a male authority figure in a movie, especially a teacher, he's gonna be a creep. Like he's gonna be gross. Um, especially if he's like walking back and forth and giving some big verbose speech about how a class is gonna change your life or some shit. Yeah, he's definitely. Basically he goes to Sarah and he's like, hey, I wanna bring you to fashion week. And that's usually something I do for seniors. But um, if you let me, uh, clap your cheeks. You can go. And she's disgusted and distraught, rightfully so. So what does she do? Tells Rebecca. Which, hey, I feel like there's certain scenes in this movie where they're still trying to insinuate that she's crazy, but sometimes you need a little crazy, all right? Crazy bitches get stuff done, all right? <laughs> Cause she went in there and she said, I'm gonna get him framed for an assault charge. other scenes where she's like being quote unquote crazy and she's doing stuff that I would have well <laughs> there's a scene where this guy is being really sexual assaulty to her while she's pumping gas and she sprays it on him and says she's gonna light him on fire Rebecca's out here doing what you bitches say you'll do this is an obsession movie though so we most likely are gonna have some Munchausen madness in here where she's like beating herself for attention or for sympathy and that is exactly what she does and she says that she gets these wounds while looking for the lost cat and for some reason it's not for some reason it's because sarah's an idiot she doesn't like contact police or question really why this chick is like no don't tell anyone i only want you to know why do i need to know then why did I need to know? See, she should have known she was crazy right there if no other time because you got stabbed and you don't want to tell nobody but me. I We not that close that I'm the only person that know you got shanked. 
But apparently they are pretty close because Sarah doesn't like going back home uh, for Thanksgiving because that was around when her, her dead sister that died. <laughs> the dead sister that died who had passed on. <laughs> That's around when she died. And so it's kind of like a bad memory for Sarah. And so Rebecca's like, well, don't even go home. You should come with me to my family for Thanksgiving. She meets the parent, seemingly nice, mild mannered people. She's in Rebecca's childhood room and she sees like a picture or a drawing of a girl. And she's like, hey, who is that? Um, come to find out that was a girl from high school, a different girl that she had gotten obsessed with, Elena from uh, Vampire Diaries. They just put all of the teen CW lineup in this movie. Another girl that she got obsessed with in high school and they end up running into her and she's like, yeah, you're a weirdo, man. Um, anyway, but before that even happens, we learned that <sighs> Rebecca was supposed to be on antipsychotic medication that is meant to treat bipolar slash schizophrenia dis related disorders. Okay, so this part, um, let me just preface this by saying, this thought isn't really well thought out. Like I haven't really reached my conclusions on how I feel about this, but I'm leaning towards, I don't like that they like put a name. It's a movie, okay? But when you put a really real name like schizophrenia or bipolar to her behavior, it insinuates that people that are bipolar slash schizophrenic are murderous. And I don't like that. I don't, I don't like that. I don't, it just feels icky to me. Like, I'm sure there are some people that are schizophrenic that are also like dangerous or bipolar that are also dangerous, but I, I don't know. I don't like the idea of insinuating. I don't know. I mean, but I guess in fairness to be a murderer at all, you would have to have something wrong with you mentally. I'm sorry, I, this wasn't even a well thought. It's just that most people with those illnesses aren't dangerous and it just, I don't know. Move along. There's a lot more lists of uh, things she does. So I'm gonna just speed past cause I feel like we've been here for a while. Is it just me? I feel, I feel like I've been talking about crazy stuff this chick has done for a very long time. Here we go, let's run through. Uh, she gets a tattoo of Sarah's dead sister who is dead, who is also deceased. <laughs> She gets a tattoo of her name in the same spot that Sarah has a tattoo of her name. And she shows it to her like, hey, look, we the same. You can think of me as your dead sister who is dead, who was also deceased, who was also passed on. And this freaks Sarah out. Finally, she's like, oh, this chick crazy, crazy. Sarah finds a bunch of pictures of herself being drawn in uh, uh, Rebecca's sketchbook. Rebecca dyes her hair, finds that ugly fedora, puts on Sarah's perfume and sneaks into a dark room with Sarah's ex, pretending to be her and stabs him with a box cutter in one of the most anticlimactic murder scenes I've ever seen in my life. Whoever arranged the music in this scene. She doesn't love you. <laughs> soft ass strings. <laughs> she uh, has lesbianic sex with the, the, um, the fashion lady and then ties her up to a bed, kidnaps her, and I guess planned to kill her, but that doesn't happen because Sarah gets there right on time. There's a lot of screaming, there's a lot of tussling, the, the, the boyfriend comes in. I forgot, there's a scene where Rebecca's just screaming, I just wanna be your friend! I just wanna be your friend! And I just need that to be clipped and made into something completely out of context. Like I want that. Nice guys be like, I just wanna be your friend. Again, we're tussling. Boyfriend gets hit in the face with a lamp or something. <laughs> Again, this movie is inadvertently hilarious. Sarah goes to shoot her, but there's no bullets. And she does the puppy dog. Oh, you th her. Uh, but eventually she just, she gets stabbed while reaching for her dead sister who was dead and deceased and passed on and no longer with us. He, she goes to reach for her necklace that Rebecca was wearing. We have a jump scare. And uh, that's the end of the movie. Um, basically, cause everything goes back to normal cause she's dead now, Rebecca's, Rebecca's dead. But yes, the movie's cheap and tawdry. I knew that. Like, are we surprised? No, 
Again, these Fatal Attraction X movies, we know what we're getting when we're walking in. We know what we're gonna feel like when we're walking out. And I, I mean, it's, you know, for all intents and purposes, I feel like this, this movie did the job. I wanted something cheap and unimportant to watch while I was cramping and wanted to uh, put my uterus on Poshmark. If you like this video, be sure to like this video. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram, Twitter, both of which are Kenny JD. If you have any other bad movie suggestions, be sure to put those down in the comment section and I will see you guys next time.